Welcome to a fifth generation Subaru Legacy. You'd be forgiven in the UK for sort of forgetting these things existed. Now, they're quite popular around the world, especially in the US and, and Australia. But in the UK, they never really sold too many of them, especially this generation. They actually only sold us the Tora or uh, estate car, which is what this model is. When I uh, got offered the chance to drive one, I, I, I jumped at the chance because it's a properly cool looking car, actually. I knew it would have the standard Subaru all-wheel drive system, and I knew that it would have some sort of quirky engine, boxer, flat four engine. This is a um, 2011. It came out in 2009, the, the, the fifth generation, sold it till 2013. They're quite difficult to place on the market and, and where they were aimed at, because at the same time as being quite a luxurious and well-appointed car, uh, with all this, this leather and, and uh, technology, and it's uh, also quite agricultural in its uh, underpinnings, you know, it's, it's all-wheel drive. It's got this very stiff clutch and, and manual gearbox that feel like you're uh, piloting something uh, a little bit more serious. And then this big, great big power bulge in front of me as well, which uh, is essentially the intake for the intercooler on the, on the engine. So this is, this is the top spec model, this is the SE Nav Plus. So it, as by the name you might imagine it has sat nav. So it also has leather seats, um, a reversing camera, Xenon headlights and keyless entry and go. Quite a high tech car for given that it came out in 2009. And the nice thing is that even if you don't buy the SE Nav Plus and you just buy the basic entry level ones, you get dual zone climate control, 10 way adjustable seats. Now. These seats, they're electrically adjustable forward and back. Uh, even in a sort of 50, 60 grand BMW or Mercedes, they often um, neglect to give you a seat that will move back and forward under its own steam. So definitely um, got plenty of kit on it. You could get this car in the UK with only three engines. Now in the rest of the world, there was a, a few different other engine options. So here you could get two petrol engines, a two litre and a 2.5, and then a diesel. Elsewhere in the world there was options such as a 3.6 litre boxer flat six, which now you're talking, it's a real shame we didn't get that here. So if anyone's watching and you've got the, like a 3.6, then uh, do let me know. The diesel was only available with the six speed manual. So then with the two litre petrol, you could get the manual or a CVT gearbox, and then the 2.5 was only CVT. The weird thing is that this, this particular car is the diesel and the world's first uh, diesel boxer engine. And I was wondering, does this mean it's going to sound good? I was getting kind of like excited to hear what it was like. I thought maybe it'll be the best sounding diesel I've heard in a while. I was sadly disappointed because it just sounds like a diesel. There is an advantage to this boxer diesel and it's that it's a little bit more like a petrol engine in its performance. It likes to rev and it's got much more linear performance doesn't have that low down turbo shove you back and then it's gone and you have to change again it's much more like smooth and okay the revs still run out at uh, sort of four four and a half five thousand so it's got a uh, electronic handbrake it's not where you'd expect it to be it's not down here in the center console it's to the right of the steering wheel now obviously Subaru knew this would be a bit weird they've literally got this sticker next to it telling you how to use it uh, and then it's got uh, hill hold assist as well which you can turn on and off next to that i'm going to try out the uh, memory seat memory option whoever had this set like sitting up straight up front it's a pretty practical car you've got um, cup holders in the middle which fit this fat bottom bottle no problem and in the side pockets as well you've got a sunglasses holder up on the top this center console cubby which sort of splits into tray on the top and then a bigger thing underneath. There's also another 12 volt socket inside the center console as well. And then a little storage place with another 12 volt socket. And then the glove box is reasonable size. And most of them don't have the great big screen in the middle here, so I'll just go over this quickly. It's not bad actually, it's quite big. Um, I mean, given this is 10 years old now, it's, it's all right. So yeah, you've got sat nav, which is okay, obviously, a little bit out of date now. Then you've got your Bluetooth phone connections and a calculator and a calendar. So that's uh, unusual. Do you want me to tell you about the back or, or not, mate? What's that? I suppose he should show you around the back now. It's his turn. So I think I'm just going to play Wordle for a bit. Welcome to the back of the Subaru Legacy Tora, where there's acres of room. 
it's fantastic back here. Crap loads of headroom, loads of legroom in front of me, even though it's set for JJ at six foot tall. You could easily get a, a family uh -huh. in here. There's not really much back here. There's some decent door pockets with cup holders. And there's a weird little bit of storage in the back of the centre console. But you can also lean them back a little bit. So I can uh, have a little sleep back here as well, which is nice. Yeah, cheers for that, mate. Oh, and there's a there's an armrest with two cup holders in it. It's got a great, great big load bay with a flat load lip. You can pull the seats down by just pulling the little handles at the back, so you don't have to lean in to do it. So you can either do it from in here or, or in the back. There's lots of storage underneath. There's a little tonneau cover thing that you can take out, like in uh, a lot of estate cars. You get these hooks that you can pull out and uh, hook things onto as well. What a lovely landscape. Cheer cheers for that, mate. Don't forget to like this video. If you think Backseat JJ is helpful, then uh, he likes it if you, if you put some likes on. And then I'm gonna get going. I was talking about this car being agricultural. I mean it in the nicest possible way, of course. There was an advert at the time with Robert De Niro in it, and he uh, basically just gets held up by a load of sheep in a very countryside kind of location. And that appears to be the advert. It's like, that's the joy of owning the Subaru. Tell you what, actually, the visibility in this car is pretty good. I've got this horrible turning here to make. It's sort of like onto a main road at a really terrible angle. But, but there's a lot of glass and I can see all the way down the length of the car and there's not really a big blind spot or anything. Oh, and to add to the visibility, the, the massive wing mirrors as well. You can see all sorts through that. The whole shape of this car actually with those massive wing mirrors, it's, it's kind of like a big Tonka toy. It does add to that rugged feeling. It actually looks quite modern. Given that this car was made in 2009, it still looks like it could be a new car. In the twisty corners, it's definitely not, not a bad car to, to drive. I mean, it's got huge wide tires on it, and they're 255s or something like that. And they, they grip really well, and the all-wheel drive makes you just feel like you can get around the corner quickly and safely. And the steering's a little bit vague, but once you get into the corner, it, it's quite fun. I like the instrument cluster in front of you. It's quite sporty in its font and design. And the little screen in front of you actually tells you what gear you're in, even in a manual, which is uh, unusual. It's got um, an MPG meter, but it's one of those like analog dials, which I've never really understood the point of. All they are is a indicator of how much you're pressing the accelerator, but in verse. And in order to put that there, they've got rid of the temperature gauge. So all you get is a little light that tells you that the engine's cold and then it goes away when the engine's warm. So the problem is to, to achieve that, that quality feeling that Subaru tend to have, it, it, it does suffer in, in other situations. The ride is a bit firm, it's not massively uncomfortable, it does handle potholes really well. General refinement is good but it's not up there with uh, you know what the Germans have got to offer so it, it's not massively noisy at speed but at the same time it's, uh, it's not the quietest thing I've ever driven. And uh, there is a bit of sort of rattling coming from the back there, uh, but generally otherwise the interior feels well screwed together. It's worth pointing out that if you really do want a, a version of this car that can go kind of off-road properly, the Outback is basically a Subaru Legacy but on stilts. They put some plastic cladding on it and stuff, but basically it's the same car, they just extended it upwards into the air. Thanks to my mate Roger for lending me this car. He reckons he's not a car guy, but all the cars he's ever owned have been weird and wonderful like this. If you, if you want a practical estate car and you're in the market for something a bit different and you don't just want the same old car that everyone else wants, I'd certainly give this car a look. It's different and that's uh, often for me that's what it's all about. It's different and it's not, it's not a bad car so you don't have to be different and have something crap. You can be different and have the dependable rugged all-wheel drive car that'll take you anywhere. It'll still get good fuel, good, good-ish fuel economy and it's got all the toys on it for, for a car this age, so. Do you have a Subaru Legacy? Let me know in the comments which model you have. If you fancy watching uh, any more JJ on Cars videos, then I'm gonna put one up here for you to watch. Uh, so click that, because that'll be whatever it is. It's a good one, so it's a good one, so watch it. And uh, yeah, cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next video.